So this morning, my wife and daughter were flying from Cincinnati, Ohio to San Francisco, California on Delta. 7.20 a.m. gate B-21. So they, they tell everybody to line up for first. So my wife gets in line. And the guy working the gate at B-21 Cincinnati Airport asked my wife, Oh, are you in first? And my wife said, Yeah, I am. And then my wife said, Are you not going to ask the guy behind me? And he goes, No. My wife said, Why? He said, Because I don't feel like it. Now my wife's a black lady. The guy behind her was a white dude. And the ticket agent was a white dude. But he asked the black lady, Are you in first? but not the white dude. So Delta, I have almost 3 million miles with you. When you see this lady, that's my wife. She flies first. Don't ask. Make sure you pause this video so that you can go to ashkicking.com, use Paris Milan at checkout for 15% off to get all of your personal hygiene related needs. Please go and support Soulfully Scented. They are a black owned hair care store that uses natural products. Go pick up your hair care products today at soulfullyscentedlv.com. Hey you guys, so you just saw in that video that Gary Owen went completely off because Delta was acting crazy asking his wife if she is actually in first class and he basically alluded that she was a victim of racial profiling by Delta. Now, this video was interesting to me because there is this epidemic that has been going on of black women across the freaking globe being physically attacked and they're also being humiliated, degraded, and they're being racially profiled in public spaces and oftentimes you don't see them being protected. Now, in this case, you can clearly see that Gary Owens protected his black wife. He didn't hesitate to speak out on it. There was something that I noticed in the comment section of where I saw this video, which was on the shade room. And in the comment section I saw a lot of black women that were celebrating this like yes he's protecting his black queen this is how you need to go about it and do it he's invited to the cookout and let me tell you some reasons why I feel as though black women should not necessarily be counting this as a win because of some of the past behavior of Gary Owen in regards to black women and black people so if you didn't know Gary Owen is actually a comedian and he's been married to his wife Kenya for 16 years now and a lot of black people try to classify Gary Owen as being you know the cool white guy that's down and all this kind of stuff and to me I kind of put him in the same category as a Michael Rappaport I feel like they both pander Michael Rappaport you know he tries to get on these white people that are culturally appropriating and act like he's so down but when the time comes for him to exert his white privilege then he'll start calling black women like Kenya Moore apes and ugly and all these other kind of things I put Gary Owen in the same category because one time he was having one of those back and forth banters that comedians typically do he and Michael Blackson were going back and forth in terms of throwing little jabs at each other and Michael Blackson basically said well I bet you won't call me the n-word or anything like that so he summoned his wife to call Michael Blackson the n-word and she did it on an Instagram video. Michael Blackson I saw your little weak comeback where you said I smell like a wet dog well my dog's wet she smells amazing yeah I kissed her white guy stuff right there also I heard you said I won't say the n-word back to you you dared me I ain't gotta say it back my lady will say it for me I got a down ass chick Michael Blackson you punk ass nigga ho Michael Blackson, you bitch ass. Nigga. <laughs> God, I wish I could say it. Now, maybe some dinner, baby. Who are you talking to? Who talked to us that? No, I want to eat. I'm gangster mode. Dinner it's mode. not about you. It's about that black nigga. Okay? It wasn't about you. Let the yeah, damn dog go. Gangster mode. But the, don't take the dog. You took the dog. But it's a gangster. Your turn, Mike. Now to me, I didn't really find that to be funny at all. I viewed it as the slave master sicking one of his slaves to go and harm another black person. And I feel as though white people like that are very dangerous. They like to pick and choose when they try to fake attempt to fight for black issues. But when the time comes for them to remind you that they are a white person, they do it readily and they do not hesitate. Not only did he sick his wife on Michael Blackson to call him the N-word, but he also interjected himself into the whole fiasco with Monique Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, as well as Lee Daniels, where Monique Monique was in a situation in which they all conspired against her claiming that she was difficult to work with and you also had the incident with Will Packer where he was saying that she was difficult to work with and then there was the incident that occurred with Netflix where they were significantly paying her less than what they were going to pay Amy Schumer instead of Gary Owen taking a stance to solidify Monique's claims that yes black women are mistreated they are disenfranchised and they are given significantly lower paying jobs and more so degrading roles in the entertainment industry he basically 
basically flipped it on to her. He just said that I'm not gonna sit back and let people slander my friend's name. Not cool, Monique went too far with this one. And he basically discredited everything that she was saying. Hello, my loves. I would like all of you to join me on Boycott and Telemundo. Recently, I pitched the comedy special and they said no due to racial, gender, and language bias. They said they're a Spanish-speaking network and I don't speak Spanish, so they wouldn't give me a special. They've given Gabriel Iglesias a special, I think, and George Lopez, I've never heard him speak Spanish, like a few words, but it just goes to show the discrimination that's happening at Telemundo. Now, Grant, I don't know Spanish, but I want to be a trailblazer. Plus, I have the beginning and end of my special. Hola, hello, gracias, adios. Thank you, good night. I just gotta fill in the rest. I can learn Spanish, but the fact that they wouldn't even negotiate and give me a special lets me know that there is racial, gender, and language bias at Telemundo. So please join me in boycotting this Spanish speaking network. Thank you. Gracias. Even though I currently do not support Monique because of her stance that she took with Roseanne where it was basically like, well, yeah, Rosanna says some racist problematic things, but she didn't say it to me, so she's not a racist. I still feel as though Monique is right. I know she didn't lie on anyone. I know that she is simply a victim of white supremacy and how they mistreat black women. But it's interesting to me that this white man who you guys are celebrating now and championing totally turned his back on this other black woman who desperately could have used him as an ally. And even though he's not on the same caliber of her in terms of being a comedian, him being a white man alone would have gave her more leverage to be able to say, hey, like he's corroborating what it is that I'm saying. He's validating my claims, but instead he took on the, well, I'm not gonna go against my own people to support you. And I'm sure some of you are gonna say, well, he was supporting a black man. So how is that going for his people? Well, these players that they use as a front to go after women like Monique, such as the Will Packers, the Tyler Perry's, the Oprah Winfrey's, the Lee Daniels, there are head honchos and big wigs that are over them. and the Lee Daniels, Oprah's, etc., are simply just used as pawns. Obviously, there is a greater institution that runs the entire entertainment industry and it's ran by whites. So therefore, when he is going against a black woman who is fighting against injustices, that is fighting against oppression that other actresses, comedians, etc., have to face on a regular basis, he is in essence uplifting himself as a white man by going against her because he knows that Monique's fight is not just about Will Packer, Tyler Perry, etc. He knows that it's bigger than that. So if he was to side with her, he is in essence siding against this dominant society that places him in a position to be able to still tour around the world even though he's not a top-notch comedian and he's not willing to give up his privilege as a white man in order to uplift a black woman. Especially one like a Monique who is an Academy Award winning actress. Why would he realistically go against his best interest to uplift black women when he knows that if he did that in order to help to shed light on Monique's situation and support her that it would also affect other white actresses and those mediocre white actresses who are not Academy Award winning actresses are going to have their place in this industry threatened. Not only did he protect himself by not supporting Monique but he also uplifted white women by not supporting her as well. He's not going to support black women in their time of need. He's not going to support black people collectively and he for sure won't support black owned businesses such as Car Marshall. I need you guys to go down and click the link below that I provide for Car Marshall. For me to keep these videos going I need you guys to go and click the link because they pay me every time that you guys click so please click 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 a freaking way I need y'all to click a thousand times if you can and go to the site and check out their vehicles they have over a hundred thousand in their inventory while you shop they will negotiate again go and support carmarshall.com now let's go back to the whole Delta Airlines situation you have to give props where props is due he promptly protected his wife in the situation he clearly chastised Delta for racially profiling his wife he didn't make any excuses about it and he also ensured that he did this public so that other people will be able to see that he does not take it lightly when his wife is treated as a subhuman species even though she is actually married to a man that is clearly a multi-millionaire. And here's another thing I feel that this will spark. I feel as though this situation just might spark some black men to get mad enough that black women are uplifting Gary Owen for defending his wife without hesitation, without making videos asking if he should. He just did it innately. I think it'll start making them feel as though okay well they're in competition with these men to start protecting 
protecting us because him being the face of protecting a black woman will make them feel as though that they need to start doing the same thing in order to prove hey like we're protecting black women now i'm sure some of you black women will come in the comment section and say well this is why we were telling you black women need to start opening their options i know that we are grabbing for straws here we're looking for a w and to prove to these black men how inept they are and this is something that i told you guys francis crest wellsing was talking about in her book the isis papers if you go to chapter six it talks about black male passivity and also how black men have been effeminized they are emasculated and they are in this system of white supremacy in which they are genetically superior to men who have the technology to be able to outnumber them and to be able to completely commit genocide against them with impunity and as a result it makes the black men regress into a state in which they are functional inferiors and as a result they don't want to fight this system of white supremacy and she also stated that women are dependent upon men for protection and they are depending upon men to defend them and as a result if a man is conquered in a society where he is oppressed the woman by default is conquered so basically what we're seeing right now is what Francis Cress Wilson prophesied was that black women were going to see a weakened submissive black male who not only is not going to be able to defend himself because he is completely dominated by the system but in essence he's not going to protect his woman but here's the thing the men who are not genetically superior to our own who have the technology which are the non-black men like a Gary Owen they have the wherewithal they have the leverage to be able to protect black women but collectively are they this is a question that I asked somebody who actually called into one of my live shows where she said that she feels as though black women should start expanding their options and when I asked her the question of these non-black men are protecting black women at rates that black men aren't she was a little bit stumped she couldn't answer the question citing that she didn't have the data well we don't need data to see it we could just look at our current conditions and we can see how these attacks on black women are becoming this ubiquitous occurrence and as a result this whole strong independent black woman narrative has actually displayed that our armor is starting to crack and it's atrophying because we in essence are not able to protect ourselves or completely defend ourselves when we are encountered by these men who are attacking us of all races asian white black they're all attacking us and unfortunately little to no people come to our aid when this occurs now i know some of you guys are going to say well it's not the role of other races of men to protect us well here's the thing that you have to be fair with if you are going to tell these black men who date outside of their race that you will no longer give them support when they encounter a situation where they're facing racial injustice the same is applicable to you in which if you are in an instance where you are being attacked you have to look to that non-black man that you are with to protect you so what's good for the goose is good for the gander if we're going to tell black men that our support is going to be relinquished if they do not date within their race well the same applies to you so the question i still ask some of you guys is are non-black men who you guys are saying we should open up our options to are they giving us support are they demolishing the system of white supremacy which they have the key to do if not then i don't understand how dating outside of our race is going to encourage us to be protected more because you guys are actually dating outside of your race and these racialized hate crimes have only increased we also have to take the l for a situation that occurred with the beauty shop beauty supply owner named june he assaulted a black woman and as a result there were black men who went out to protest he decided to make a 50 percent off special and a bunch of black women went out instead and put aside their self-esteem in order for some 50 percent off of these products that oftentimes they cause a lot of health problems pulling your hair out alopecia and other diseases and we've seen studies that these products that they sell do actually cause diseases they still chose to go out there and go against their better interests now how can we say that some of our men are not protecting us but then when instances occur where they do try to come out and protect us it's still not good enough because some of us will find a reason let's even go back to Monique you clearly see what Monique's husband you guys have whatever you say about him or whatever but he stands by his wife he has not forsaken her in any sort of way you guys call him crazy you still talk about him so you guys kind of pick and choose when you talk about support when a black man like her husband whether he's crazy whether he's overbearing or whatever he's standing by her he's supporting her he's displaying that he loves her to the public and y'all still be dragging him but when black men don't show you any support any regard or whatever we still kind of complain so all i ask is that we try to be fair i know that this protection out here is lacking but we also need to analyze our actions as well our men absolutely need to step up to the plate we shouldn't have to make videos telling them to step up to the plate they should automatically be doing this for us because if their women are out here being savagely attacked that makes them look extremely weak and it's embarrassing to see all these videos on youtube where these men are asking questions like well should we protect black women if you have to ask the question then you better ask it for yourself when you get shot down by the police or something happens to your family members because a lot of black women are getting on the same collective code where they're basically saying whatever happens to you happens and don't look for us to support you the same way that you guys haven't been supporting us please make sure you like comment subscribe and share and i'll talk to you guys
you guys in my next video. Bye!